question, but I'll hold it to the end. Um, so hi, I'm Lori Lachance, and I'm on the research faculty at the uh, School of Public Health. Uh, my own work with sustainable food systems em emphasizes health equity and also community-driven processes for change. I'm wrapping up uh, 10 years of work in an initiative that was funded by the Kellogg Foundation uh, known as Food and Fitness. And in, in that initiative, we focused on systems and policy changes uh, in, in um, neighborhoods across the nation. Our findings and tools and all the lessons that we learned in this initiative have just recently been published in a special issue of health promotion practice. So um, you can look for it there and I'd be happy to talk with you more. Um, now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Tim Lorick. Tim is presently the Community Outreach Coordinator for the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies here at the University of Michigan, where he works closely with Michigan and Puerto Rican scholars, teachers, and students to design and implement curriculum and community resources. He received his PhD in history from Yale University, and his dissertation won multiple prizes. Um, including the Gilbert C. Fight Award for Best Dissertation from the Agricultural History Society. He's a scholar of Columbia, food and agriculture, Latin American environmental history, and he is completing a book, a uh, manuscript right now, and the title is Conflicted Landscape, Agriculture, Columbia, and the Making of a Green Revolution. <coughs> He's published articles and book chapters on the U.S., Midwest, Latin America. He's just a, he's a junior faculty member. Um, <coughs> um, and um, Puerto Rico, including the Puerto Rican Connection, Recovering the Cultural Triangle and Global Histories of Agricultural Development. And that is forthcoming in 2020, January of 2020. Tim previously served as program coordinator for Yale University's program in agrarian studies and held an Andrew W. Mellon Fellowship with the Humanities Institute at the New York Botanical Garden. He's also worked previously in community agriculture in Albuquerque's South Val Valley and he earned his MA in history from the University of New Mexico. He misses his favorite food, New Mexico breakfast burritos, with roasted chili, especially during fall chili roasting season. So the title of Tim's talk is Looking for Utopia, Agriculture for Peace in Columbia. Uh, wow, great. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. All right. Sunrise on the Colombian Llanos, the vast tropical savanna that comprises much of eastern Colombia and western Venezuela. Students in orange and blue jumpsuits tend to twisting vines of maracuya, passion fruit, and gather to unearth yuca while passing around a thermos of coffee. They come to these hot flatlands from towns and far-flung villages in any Colombian province afflicted by conflict. At home, some of the students were actively and even simultaneously recruited by the local guerrilla paramilitary, and the Colombian army. Instead, they chose agronomy. The University of La Salle, Universidad de La Salle, agricultural engineering campus is outside of the small regional city of Yopal. It is named, optimistically, Utopia. Utopia. Students from rural communities affected by violence are recruited by La Salian priests to come to Utopia to earn agricultural engineering degrees. They study sustainable and economically viable cultivation methods that they must implement in their home communities upon graduation as a condition of their scholarship. Yet this program with its contemporary rhetoric of food security and conflict resolution and sustainability has deep roots. Although rarely recognized as such, contemporary initiatives such as the Utopia Project echo the 1930s in Colombia. So today, at Utopia, students tend cacao growing in the shade of companion plantain and acacia trees. In 1937, students at the Gran High Escuela, or farm school, in the village of Roldanillo studied cacao with hopes of revitalizing an industry long considered vital to independent farming families with small plots of land. Similarly, the farm school in the village of Andalusia 
was oriented towards serving the population of its immediate environs, where some 5,000 small farms operated on two or three hectares of land. Within a few years of its founding, over 200 students from these area families had passed through the Andalusia School for free. Like the school in Andalusia, the farm school in Buga offered scholarships to students from farming families near and far, with free lodging and meals comprised of the students' harvests from their outdoor classrooms. The schools balanced education and subsistence crops with market or cash crops like cacao or tobacco, teaching an integrated form of mixed agriculture. The language of sustainability and food security may be new, but the Utopia project is deeply connected to these mostly forgotten initiatives. The farm school movement of the 1930s emerged as a social tool for peace and conflict negotiation in the Colombian countryside. Scarred by political unrest over land tenure issues in the 1920s, the Colombian state passed a land reform in 1936, and the farm school movement reflects this broader energy of that populist and agrarian-minded era. Ultimately, dissatisfaction with the land reform's limitations and the seeming abandonment of local, locally-oriented initiatives like farm schools in favor of the recruitment of large-scale technical development projects alienated many rural co Colombians and contributed to the intensification of violence in the 1940s and 50s. In the early 60s, the state issued another agrarian reform in an effort to appease dissatisfied small farmers and the landless population. And this too was largely deemed inadequate by some, and the 1960s witnessed the rise of the left-wing guerrilla insurgencies in Colombia. Utopia has connections to this time as well, owing much to the liberation theology movement of the 60s and 70s in Latin America, where parish priests joined their congregations in fights against political dictatorship and or economic oligarchy. Sometimes priests even took up arms. In one of the most famous examples, Colombian priest Camilo Torres Restrepo was killed in an armed confrontation shortly after he joined the ELN, or National Liberation Army, in 1966. But prior to joining the guerrilla, Torres worked on the ground organizing rural cooperatives to offer continuing education classes and assistance with navigating the bureaucracy of land redistribution under the 1961 law. One of his most significant cooperatives was, in fact, in Yopal, the site of the present-day Utopia project. So when we examine the Utopia project's historical lineage, we see the reflection of the farm schools of the 1930s and liberation theology in the 1960s. In both of those times, weak agrarian reforms reverberated like broken promises throughout the Colombian countryside, and widespread violence followed. In our own time, Utopia points to the promise of peace. Between 2012 and 2016, while students tended their crops at Utopia, the Colombian government negotiated a fragile peace accord with the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, the FARC, the oldest left-wing guerrilla insurgency in Latin America. It's important to note that the first area of negotiation in these peace accords was comprehensive rural development, uh, reflecting the FARC's genesis as an agrarian insurgency in the 1960s. Meanwhile, large-scale agricultural strikes shook Colombia in 2013 and 2015 as farmers descended upon the capital, Bogota, and a group of mass protest protesters even took over the Colombian Ministry of Agriculture, demanding the government keep promises to support small farmers facing competition from large multinationals. Colombia is currently navigating a most fragile peace. Long-term peace rests in no small part on addressing the country's failed, uh, I'm sorry, the country's persistent rural inequalities in a way that the agrarian reforms of 1936 and 1961 failed to do. Utopia's laboratory for peace is a hopeful project for growing Colombia's vibrant future. But amidst this energy for the future, there are echoes from the past. Thanks.